Jesus is the answer for the world today. Good morning. And welcome to Christian Pentecostal Church's Devotional Moment. I'm Pastor Brenda Bird. Would you turn with me to Acts chapter 15? I'm going to be pulling a few verses out of this chapter, but I would encourage you to read the whole chapter. Our verse for today is Matthew chapter 17, 5. And it says, while they, he was still speaking, a cloud covered them. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son. Hear him or listen to him. Acts chapter 15. Let's open in prayer. Father, I thank you so much for your word this morning. I pray, O oh God, that revelation, illumination will come to the hearts of everyone that is listening today. That because of your purpose and your plan, Jesus came and died for the sins of all men, Jew and Gentile, every nation, every creed, every color. And Lord God, it was your purpose and your plan that he would come and shed his blood to die for us. Those that will believe, those that will accept your propitiation, your atonement. That he came because you so loved us. I pray every heart is open to receive. Every ear will hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Acts chapter 15, verse 1 says this. Some men came down from Judea and began teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised in accordance with the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 7 says, after a long debate, because disciples knew that salvation came through accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and the blood that he shed on the cross for us. And then you had some of the Jewish brethren saying, no, that's that's fine, but you must be circumcised as well. And so this question was being addressed. And so Paul and Barnabas quite naturally greatly dis, dis, uh, disagreed and so they went to speak to the apostles and the elders and so they were debating back and forth and we pick it up at 17 after a long debate Peter got up and said to them brothers you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by my mouth the Gentiles would hear the message of the gospel and believe. Gentiles are many nations. And so he said out of the Jewish uh, nation, out of the people of, of the Jewish culture that was there at that time, Peter said, God chose me to go and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he came, that he died on the cross, that he was buried and that he rose and he's coming back again to the nations that were other than Jewish nations. A says, and God who knows and understands the heart testified to them, giving them the Holy Spirit as he also did us. And so we know that Peter was uh, uh, summoned by a man by the name of Cornelius and to come to his house after an angel had appeared to him and um, said, send for Peter. And he would come and, and explain to him the way of salvation. As Peter was speaking to them, which was uh, really um, inappropriate, according to Jewish culture, Peter was in, his, in their house. He wasn't even supposed to go into the house of a Gentile person or a person of another nation. Most less talk to them and share about the Messiah, the Christ. But he did because he knew that God had spoke to him and sent him. And so while he was speaking and shedding the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Lord himself confirmed the words by filling them with the same Holy Spirit, with the same baptism, with the evidence and speaking in tongues that he did with the Jewish people in the upper room. So this is what Peter is speaking to. He said, um, now then, why are you testing by placing a yoke 
on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we have been able to endure. So after he began to talk to them about what happened when he stood up and he went and spoke to the, uh, the Gentiles in, in Cornelius house, verse eight says, God who knows and understands the heart. See, this is a hard thing. God is not concerned about what we say. God is not concerned about what we do. God is concerned with what's in our heart. The Bible tells us out of the heart, the abundance of the mouth will speak. So whatever is in our heart will overflow out of our mouth. Give it some time. So God says in another verse that people draw near to me with their lips. They know how to praise me. They know how to say good things. They know how to, to, uh, 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 what to say and when to say, but their heart is far from me there. They can speak well, but their heart is far from me. All of our hearts were darkened. The Bible says that the heart is deceitful, deceitful and extremely wicked. Who can know it? And then he goes on to say, I, the Lord, search the heart. God searches the heart for faithfulness. God searches the heart for honesty. God searches the heart for humility. God searches the heart for love. God wants us to be an example of who he is in the earth. We are to walk like him, talk like him. Amen. Love like him. All of these other things we can do, but it's the fruit of the spirit. It's the love. It's the joy. It's the peace. It's the gentleness. He said, you will know them by their fruit, by their character of the Holy Spirit is what identifies us. Not what we say, not how well we can talk, how well we can sing, how well we can dance, how well we can praise, do a dance, hallelujah, shout. No, it's what is the condition of our heart. So he goes on to say, but we, verse 11, but we believe that we are saved through the precious undeserved grace of the Lord Jesus, which makes us free of the guilt of sin and grants us eternal life in just the same way as they are. All the people remain silent and they listen attentively. Verse 13 says, and when they had finished, James replied, brothers to listen. And he began to say, you know, Peter just described to you guys of what happened when God sent him to the, uh, uh, the Gentile nations and began to spread the gospel. But I want to show you that it has been prophesied that these things, what happened. And so in verse 15, James began, uh, began to elaborate on what Peter had just said. And verse 15 says, the words of the prophets agree with this. Just as it is written in scripture, after these things, I will return and I will rebuild the tent of David, which has fallen. Hallelujah. I will rebuild the tent of David, which has fallen. Pages are very thin. And then he goes on to say, I will rebuild its ruins and I will restore it so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord and all the Gentiles upon whom my name has been invoked, says the Lord, who has been making these things known from long ago. You will find those uh, backup scriptures in Isaiah 45, 21. Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 15, and Amos chapter 9, verse 11 and 12. 19 says, therefore, it is my judgment that we do not trouble and make it difficult for those who are turning to God among the Gentiles by putting obstacles in their way. Wow. By not putting obstacles in their way. Brother and sister, it is our responsibility. It is our mandate from God to be a light to this world. It is a mandate from God for us to be the salt of the earth. 
that we were seasoned, that we were preserved. Salt used to be used as a healing balm, the balm of Gilead. Amen. And that we would be that salt to those that are hurting and going through, that we would be a light to the world. So my question to you today is, are you being a stumbling block in someone else's way or are you being a pathway to Jesus? God bless you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his wonderful face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance towards you, my brother and my sister, and give you his peace. God bless you.